Okay, so in this problem, uh, we've got, I think, probably a, a slightly more complicated problem the first time you see something like this. So we've got a plane that leaves the airport on a bearing of 45 degrees traveling at 400 miles an hour. So, all right, so maybe we can sketch a little diagram here as we go for what's going on. So we'll put the airport here at the origin. Um, so it's traveling at a bearing of 45 degrees, so 0 degrees and our bearing of 45 degrees. So it's traveling uh, just northeast. Again, so the bearing tells us that this is 45 degrees. And again, traveling at 400 miles per hour. Okay, so we know the magnitude is 400 miles per hour. Uh, the wind is blowing at a bearing of 135 degrees. Well, if you think about, so the wind, um, so 0 degrees, 90 degrees, we would have 135 degrees um, would be pointing this direction. So that's a bearing of 135 degrees. Again, you can think about this vector though. We can move this vector around anywhere that we want to. So imagine taking this vector and kind of sticking it, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be blowing on the plane. So here's our vector that's pointing against the plane. So really intuitively what's going to happen, well, uh, probably this, this, uh, the plane is going to start, you know, drifting a little bit, you know, more, more uh, east than north. And we could even imagine sticking this vector here again. So maybe we'll call this vector, the original vector, P for the plane. Maybe we can call this new vector uh, W for the wind. So this is just the exact same vector. What's going to happen is the true uh, flight path of the plane is going to be, uh, I, you know, I'm making it dotted here for no reason. It's going to be this vector um, in blue here at the bottom. So maybe we'll call that vector T for the true flight path. So what we're going to try to do is figure out an equation, uh, some or components for this this vector uh, t. Well, to do that, remember when we do vector addition, uh, it looks to me like vector t that would equal vector p plus vector w. So what I'm going to try to do now is really find components for my vector p and my vector w. We'll add them. And to find the velocity, we can now start taking uh, the. Uh, to find the velocity, we can then just take the magnitude of the of that new vector. So that's kind of the game plan here. So let's see. So our original vector, um, the plane vector, that was at a bearing of 45 degrees, but that also means that this would be 45 degrees. The magnitude of the plane, I think we said the magnitude was 400 miles per hour. So again, the magnitude is equivalent to the length. So I'm going to find the component form for this vector. Okay, well, to do that again, we can just use a little bit of trigonometry. I think we've done this a few times now. So this has a length of 400. This is 45 degrees. I'm going to figure out x and y. Um, so let's see, cosine of 45 degrees, that would equal, uh, so cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so x over 400. We can multiply both sides by 400. We'll get 400 times cosine of 45 degrees equals x. Cosine of 45 degrees is just root 2 over 2. Well, 400 over 2 is going to be 200. So we'll have 200 times the square root of 2 for our x value. Same way we can figure out the, uh, the y component. We would just get sine of 45 degrees equals y over 400. Multiply both sides by 400. Again, sine of 45 degrees, that's root 2 over 2. So we'll get the exact same thing. So we'll also get 200 root 2 for uh, 200 root 2 for the y value. Okay, so that tells us now that our vector p, so vector p has components 200 comma root 2 and 200 comma root 2. 
I stuck an extra comma in there. So 200 root 2, comma 200 root 2. So there's our vector p. All right, the same thing. Um, now we need to find the components for our vector w. Well, this is our vector w. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm, I'm going to make a little right triangle for that one. And we get we said the uh, the wind was gusting at a speed of 40 miles per hour. So again, that's going to be the magnitude. So we make a little triangle. Okay, so it was gusting at 40 miles per hour, so that's what I'm going to make the magnitude in this case. And since it was at a bearing of 135 degrees, well, 90 degrees would take us due east, and then we would have to go yet again another 45 degrees. So let's see, again I can call this x and y, so we'll figure out the components for our new vector here. So just like before, uh, we'll get cosine of 45 degrees is going to equal, well, x over 40. Um, if we multiply by 40, we'll get 40 times cosine of 45 degrees, but we've seen that's root 2 over 2. 40 over 2 is going to be 20. So we get 20 root 2 equals x. Um, same thing to get the y component. We'll do sine of 45 degrees equals y over 40. We can multiply both sides by 40. We've seen that sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. So again, we'll get 20 root 2 for the second component as well. So really, our wind vector has components. Now, we've got to be a little more careful here. Okay, so if you think about this, uh, this vector, so certainly uh, the first component should be positive. It should be 20 comma root 2 because it's going in the positive x direction. But since it's going south, the, uh, the, the, the y component, the second component, would have to be negative. So we would get negative uh, 20 times the square root of 2. All right, so um, we've got components for our vector p. Again, we said vector p. Uh, both of those would be positive. So we had vector p was 200 square root of 2, uh, comma, 200 square root of 2. So that's the vector that describes the motion of the plane. This is the vector that describes the motion of the wind. We said the true uh, flight path, though, the true tra trajectory um, would simply be vector p plus vector w. So that's what we'll do. So vector t, maybe we should squeeze it in. So uh, vector t is going to be p plus w. Well, again, we know how to add vectors. We just add respective components. So we'll get 200 square root of 2 plus 20 square root of 2. And then for our second component, um, we'll get 200 root 2 plus a negative 20 root 2. Well, uh, we can combine these. 200 root 2 plus 20 root 2 would be 220 root 2. Um, 200 root 2 minus 20 root 2 would be 180 root 2. So that's going to be the true, uh, you know, that's going to be the vector that describes the true flight path here of our plane. And now what did we actually want? I've even forgotten. I think we wanted the, uh, the actual velocity of the plane. Well, to figure out the velocity of the plane, we would simply take the magnitude of our vector t. So we would have 220 square root of 2 squared uh, plus 180 times the square root of 2 squared. So this looks like a nice calculator problem to me. Um, so 220, 220 squared is 48,400. Uh, the Well, let's just go ahead and write it all down. 48,400. The square root of 2 squared is just going to be 2. Um, let's see, so 180 squared, that's going to be 32400. Zero, zero. The square root of 2 squared is just 2, so we can always double these. So 
let's see, this will be 64800, zero, zero, our second term. Let's see, 4840, zero, zero, when we double that. So just 96800, zero, zero, that looks right. That looks right to me. Um, now we can simply add these two numbers together and take the square root. So I'm getting 161, 600. And if we take the square root of that, I'm getting that to be roughly equal to 401995. So certainly we could round this up um, to 402 miles per, per hour. So even though the plane uh, officially was only going in a sense 400 miles an hour, that makes sense. You know that little that the wind is kind of pushing it a little bit. You know it's giving a little bit of force to where it's moving a little bit further to the right to me intuitively, um, and you can see that even by the uh, you know the uh, the new vector t. Of course things are a little more complicated than that, but intuitively to me I think uh, in this case certainly the 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 plane should be traveling a little faster than 400 miles an hour due to this wind speed. So again, that's all we're doing, just finding, uh, you know, be careful, <clears throat> be careful with your bearings. We're just finding components for each of the vectors, adding them together, and then just finding the magnitude at the very end.